السلام عليكم everybody بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful praise be to Allah peace and blessing be upon his messenger Prophet Muhammad his family and his companion today we are going to continue with the prophetic family we are going to continue with the noble family of the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him First of all, we have to say that all pictures of the Prophet family, peace and blessing be upon him, are not real photos. Today we are going to talk about Abdul Muttalib, Shayba ibn Hashim. Uh, we talked about the birth of Abdul Muttalib, and we talked about his father and his mother in the video of uh, Hashim ibn Abd Manaf, uh, in the video of Hashim ibn Abd Manaf, part four. Uh, please watch this video to know how um, Hashim ibn Abd Manaf met his mother Salma and uh, to know about the birth of Abdul Muttalib. We talked about this in detail in the video of Hashim ibn Abd Manaf uh, part 4. Today we are going to talk about Abdul Muttalib and we are going to talk about the discovery of Zamzam well. You know that the um, people of Jorham, they filled Zamzam well before they they, uh, they were expelled from uh, Mecca. When uh, Khuza'a expelled them from Mecca, they felled Zamzam well. And uh, today we are going to uh, know about the discovery of Zamzam well. And we are going to talk about Abdul Muttalib, Shayba ibn Hashim. So Abdul Muttalib or Shayba ibn Hashim, he also called uh, Shayba al Hamd. He was also called Shaybatul Hamd ibn Hashim. Uh, the he is the grandfather of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. So Abdul Muttalib is the first grandfather of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Here is Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Here is his father Abdullah, and his grandfather is Abdul Muttalib or Shayba or Shaybatul Hamd. Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. Uh, his father is Hashim. Hashim ibn Abd Manaf is the second grandfather of the Prophet, be some blessing be upon him. We talked about Hashim ibn Abd Manaf in five videos. And we talked about Abd Manaf ibn Qusay ibn Kilab, the third grandfather of the Prophet. And we talked about Qusay ibn Kilab, the fourth grandfather of Prophet Muhammad, be some blessing be upon him, in about five videos. So uh, today we're going to talk about Abdul Muttalib or Shay. This is the video of, um, this is the one of Hashim ibn Abd Manaf part 4, uh, where you can see the birth of Abdul Muttalib. So Abdul Muttalib, his father is Hashim ibn Abd Manaf. Uh, the full name of Hashim is Hashim, so we can say that Abdul Muttalib is the son of of Hashim. When I say Hashim, Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim, this means uh, Abdul Muttalib is the son of Hashim. Ibn means son. So Abdul Muttalib is the son of Hashim, Ibn Abd Manaf, Ibn Qusay ibn Kilab, Ibn Murra, Ibn Ka'b, Ibn Lu'ay, Ibn Ghalib, Ibn Fahr, uh, Ibn Malik, Ibn Al-Nadr, Ibn Kinana, Ibn Khuzayma, Ibn Madrika, Ibn Ilyas, Ibn Mudar, Ibn Nizar, Ibn Ma'd, Ibn Adnan. So this is the full name of Abdul Muttalib. Uh, Abdul Muttalib mother was the business lady Salma, Salma bint Amr al Najjariya from a very big family called uh, uh, Al Najjar family, is um, in Al Khazraj tribe in Al Madina. Al Madina was called Yathrib at that time. So his mother was Salma bint Amr ibn Zayd ibn Labid ibn Khidash ibn Amir ibn Ghanim ibn Uday ibn Al Najjar. This is the full name of his mother. His brothers, he has two brothers, Abdul Muttalib has two brothers from his mother uh, named Amr and Ma'bad. And they are the sons of Uhayha ibn Al-Gulah. They are not the sons of Hashim, but he, uh, they are his uh, brothers from this mother, from this mother. 
and Uhayha um, uh, ibn al-Gulah was the ex-husband of uh, Salma. So uh, Abdul Muttalib, uh, you know the name of his father, Hashim, and the name of his mother is Salma bint Amr, and his, uh, he has two brothers, Amr and, Ma and Ma'bad, these two brothers from this mother. He has two brothers from this mother, Amr and Ma'bad, and those are the sons of Uhayha ibn al-Gulah, okay? Now, we, you know that uh, Abdul Muttalib was born in Yathrib. Yathrib, which is al Madina nowadays. It is called al Madina after the Hijra, when uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, Hajar to al Madina uh, to the Yathrib. Yathrib was called al Madina, but before that, it was called Yathrib. So he born in Yathrib in 497, and he died in Mecca in 578, about the age of 80 or 81. Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim ibn Abd Manaf was brought up in Al Muttalib house, his uncle Al Muttalib house. But later on, Al Muttalib died. Al Muttalib died in Bardaman in Yemen. And so Abdul Muttalib took over and carried on the practices of his forefathers with his people. Means he um, has to provide the pilgrims with water and the food. And this is called the Sikaya and the Rifada. Abdul Muttalib managed to, ma to maintain his people's prestige and outdo his grandfathers in his honorable behavior which gains, gained him Mecca deep love and high esteem. He attained such eminence as none of his forefathers enjoyed. His people loved him, and his reputation was great among them. He served the pilgrims. He considered the pilgrims as uh, the guests of Allah, and he make uh, a good service for the pilgrims and for the Kaaba. That's why his people loved him. When Al Muttalib died, Naufal uh, usurped Abdul Muttalib of his charge. So Naufal, uh, his uncle, went to uh, him, to Abdul Muttalib, and said to him, You are not going to do um, Sukaya and Rifada anymore, and this will be my charge. So Abd, uh, Abdul Muttalib asked for help from Quraysh, but Quraysh abstained from extending any sort of support to either of them. Quraysh said, no, no, we can't talk between you and your uncle. We are not going to extend any sort of help to you or to your uncle. So consequently, he wrote to his uncles of Bani An-Najjar, his mother's brother, in Yathrib uh, to come to his aid. You know, remember when Al Muttalib went to uh, bring uh, Abdul Muttalib from uh, from Yathrib to Mecca. He said to his mother, uh, "I'm taking Abdul Muttalib uh, to restore the authority of his father because Hashim ibn Abd Manaf was the one who um, who was responsible about Sikaya and Rifada and uh, about uh, Quraysh, and he was the leader of Quraysh. And he said to her, "I'm." Taking Taking, um, Abdul Mut I'm taking Shaiba, who is Abdul Muttalib, so that he can restore his father's authority. That's why she left him and she agreed to uh, that Abdul Muttalib go with him. So Abdul Muttalib uh, wrote to his uncles to come to his aid. His uncle Abu Sa'd ibn Hudayy, his mother brother, marched to Mecca. You know, Bani al Najjar is a very big family. Al Khazraj is a very, very big family in Medina. So he went to Mecca, he marched to Mecca at the head of 80 horsemen and camped in Abtah in Mecca. And Abdul Muttalib received them, he received the men and invited them to go to his house. But uh, Abu Sa'd said, no, not before I meet Naufal. 
he found now Fal sitting with some old men of Quraysh in the, in the shade of Al Kaaba. Abu Sa'd drew his sword and said to him, I swear by Allah that if you don't give to my nephew what you have taken, I will kill you right now with this sword. So Naufal was thus forced to give up what he had uh, usurped from uh, Abdul Muttalib. And the notable of Quraysh were made to witness to his words. Abu Sa'd then went to Abdul Muttalib's house and uh, he stayed uh, there for three nights. He made Umrah and left back to Yathrib. When Khuza'a tribe saw Bani and Najjar support to Abdul Muttalib, you know Khuza'a tribe, when they saw that Banu and Najjar supported Abdul Muttalib, they said, he is our son as he is yours, and we have more reasons to support him than you. You know, because Abd Manaf mother was one of them. Remember, Abd Manaf mother was Hubba bint Hulayl. Hulayl al-Habashi was the king of uh, Khuza'a, was the king of Mecca. Because I told you that Khuza'a ruled Mecca for 300 years. And the king was um, Hulayl al-Habashi when Qusay ibn Kilab came to Mecca. And then he expelled all the Khuza'a out of Mecca and regained uh, the rule of Mecca. Remember Dar al Nadwa? Dar al Nadwa was the first town in, or the first ho town hall in Arabian Venezuela. This is um, made by Qusay ibn Kilab. Qusay ibn Kilab made Dar al Nadwa for Quraysh to meet and to, to meet there and uh, to unite the world of Quraysh. And uh, you know, uh, I talked about Dar al Nadwa in the videos of Qusay ibn Kilab. So Khuza'a went to Dar al Nadwa because they used to go to Dar al Nadwa when they are going to make agreement or alliance or to talk about war or to talk about uh, and for the contract and for everything. Thing. It is Dar al Nadwa, the, uh, the official um, uh, building they go to it is Dar al Nadwa. So Khuza'a went to Dar al Nadwa and entered into alliance with Bani Hashim against Bani Abd Shams and Naufal. So they, they make an alliance with Bani Hashim against Bani Abd Shams and Naufal. And this alliance was very important because it was an alliance that was later to constitute the main reason for the conquest of Mecca. Abdul Muttalib witnessed two important events in his lifetime. There are two important events in Abdul Muttalib's lifetime. Digging Zamzam well and the elephant trade. So to, in, today we are going to talk about digging them, them, them well. This is the first, uh, the discovery of them, them well, the first event. We are going to talk about the first event, which is the discovery of them, them well. You know when Khuza'a tribe uh, won over Jerhum, you know that people of Jerhum were uh, ruling Mecca. And when Khuza'a tribe overcome uh, Jerhum and they expelled Jerhum out of Mecca. Jerhum was very angry to go out of Mecca. So what they did, Jerhum tried to prevent Khuza'a from the benefit from to use um, Zamzam well. So they intended, they knew that uh, Khuza'a intended to take over the sanctuary of Allah's house. So the people of Jerhum threw the deer gold, the gold deer, in the Zamzam well. You know, there were two deer of gold and six swords of gold and um, some uh, armors. 
these things were given as a present, as presents to the Kaaba. So when people, sometimes the Persians, sometimes the uh, Romans, sometimes the uh, people give presents to the Kaaba. So these things were presents to the Kaaba. And the people of Jerusalem took all these things before they leave and they put it in Zamzam well to, close, to, pre, to prevent any people from taking these gold and also to prevent people from using uh, the, the Zamzam well. So they filled it up, they filled the Zamzam well with earth and the stone in such a way that no sign of the aforesaid things was at all visible. Uh, so that they could not be brought out uh, and the people of Jerusalem blocked the Zamzam well so that the remaining Mecca inhabitants uh, couldn't receive the blessings of Zamzam well. So uh, when of course so oh, uh, Hosea tribe ruled Mecca for 300 years and they were uninformed about Zamzam well they they didn't know where is Zamzam well for 300 years it was filled Zamzam well was filled and even when Kusay ibn Kilab overcome the Hosea and he expelled the Hosea out of Mecca uh, he expelled the Hosea out of Mecca and regain uh, the control of Mecca, even uh, at the time of Qusay ibn Kilab, he remained uninformed about the Zamzam well. As time went by, the existence of Zamzam well was forgotten, and until the time of, Ab of uh, Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib received divine message regarding the location of Zamzam well. One night when Abdul Muttalib was asleep near the Kaaba, he saw in a dream that someone was asking him to dig up Tiba. Someone asking him, dig up Tiba. He said, what is Tiba? But the man gone. When he awoke, he couldn't follow what Tiba was. Next night, when he slept at the same place, the same man asked him again to dig up Barra. He said to him, dig up Barra, Barra. And Abdul Muttalib asked him, what is Barra? But the man gone. On the third night, he asked him, dig up Madnuna, Madnuna. He said, what is Madnuna? But the man gone. Finally, on the fourth night, he was instructed to dig up Zamzam. So the same man asked him, dig up Zamzam. He said, what is Zamzam? The man replied, Zamzam, which would never dry up, no matter how much of it is served for, to Hajj. And it is between the abdominal contents and the blood. Oh, in the place where the Ahsam crow clack, at the village of ants. In the morning, he, he started looking for these signs. Abdul Muttalib started looking for these signs, but he didn't know, he don't, didn't reach anything. He, he was looking at the Kaaba, near the Kaaba, but he did not reach anything. And while he was searching around the Kaaba, a people came with a cow and slaughtered the cow at the idol Esaph. They used to slaughter the um, uh, cows or um, the camels at the idol Esaph, and the blood flowed. And so Abdul Muttalib knew that this is the site of the blood. And then the cow got up and ran and then collapsed and they fell somewhere else. So they finished on her and they opened her stomach and the abdominal contents came out of her belly. So he knew the place of the abdominal contents. But the place was so large, the place between the blood and the abdominal contents, because the cow ran, ran and they uh, and collapsed at uh, somewhere. So this place is so large, and he couldn't dig all this area. 
He searched this place and he found the village of ants. But it is so large. The ants are scattered over a large area and he could not dig all this area. While he was searching, a crow with red legs and white feathers on his wings descended. See the crow with red leg legs and with feather on his wings. And this is what the Arab call al asam crow. They called this crow when the crow has red legs and some white uh, feathers in his wings. They call it uh, al ghurab al asam, the asam crow. They call it al ghurab al asam, the asam crow. So he saw this crow descended, and the crow began to uh, uh, picking in the ground near the village of ants. So Abdul Muttalib knew that this was the intended place. He knew that uh, he would find the Zamzam well, which the Jorhum tribe had filled uh, when they left Mecca. So he told Christ. He could, said to them, uh, during four nights, I have dreamed about the digging of Zamzam well. This is our precious treasure. Let's dig it up to get water for the pilgrims. So Christ refused. Christ refused. She sa Christ said, uh, you can't dig near the Kaaba or near our idol, Isaf. Abdul Muttalib insisted to dig near Idil Isaf and he insisted to dig the well and um, Quraysh tried to stop him. The people of Christ tried to stop him and told him we will never let you dig at the Kaaba. This is our sacred house. We are not. You will never. We will never let you dig at the Kaaba. At, at that time, he had only one son called Al Harith. Al Harith stood guard until they gave up their protest. Abdul Muttalib began to do the job by himself, and his son helped him. When Abdul Muttalib felt it was hard to dig, he went to the Kaaba and hold its door and prayed to Allah to grant him ten sons. And he vowed that he would sacrifice one of them for him. Then he began to dig the well again. Abdul Muttali found traces of an old well and exclaimed Allahu Akbar. When the well of Zamzam gushed water, uh, Quraysh made a claim to partnership in the enterprise. When they saw the Zamzam well gushed forth, wa gushed uh, water forth, so Quraysh said to him, "We are we." have a partnership we are partnership in this uh, in this place they said we are partner in this treasure of grace and bless it cannot be reserved only for you but abdul muttalib refused their demands on the ground that allah had singled him only uh, for his honorable job as you as you did not uh, and he told them he said to them as you did not help me digging it it is now exclusively mine and my sons and everyone insisted on his right christ want to um, participate uh, christ want to be partner and abdul muttalib refused and everyone insisted on his right and they were about to fight uh, to settle the dispute, uh, they agreed to consult Bani Sa'd diviner in Yathrib. So at that time, when there is, um, where there is dispute, they usually go to diviner. And in, in most of the time, they go to diviner outside uh, Mecca. So they agreed to consult Bani Sa'd diviner in Yathrib. 
So they went to Yathrib, but they didn't find her. People told them that she left to Khaybar. So they decided to follow her to Khaybar. In their way to Khaybar, Abdul Muttalib caravan ran out of water, and they asked the other group for water, but they refused. They said, we have only little water, which is only enough for us. So thinking they would surely die, they are in the desert, they would surely die. The people of Abdul Muttalib asked him what to do. Abdul Muttalib replied, as we would surely die, we better dig our, our graves. We will surely die. We are in the desert, no water. We surely die. So we better dig our graves. And when one dies, the others bury him and so on until the last one. The last one will not be buried. And this is much better than all of us not be buried. They said it's okay. The other caravan observed them, looking what is going to happen to them. So they started digging their own graves, and they waited for death. Then Abdul Muttalib thought again and said, By God, what is this? How do we sit and wait for death? This is helplessness. Oh, I see hope. I see that we look for water so that we may find it. Why we don't go and search for water? Let's go and search. We may find some water. And while they were standing up to search for water, Abdul Muttalib camel struck the ground with its foot and a little water come, came out. You know, sometimes the, uh, the people, you know, the, in the desert, the people tribes, uh, the tribes dig, dig wells. And when they leave the place, when they, were, they are forced to leave the place because of enemy or something, they fill the, the well so that their enemies do not benefit of the well. So sometimes when you dig the water anywhere and when you dig the floor, any, the ground anywhere, in the desert you may find water so Abdul Muttalib camel struck the ground with its foot and a little water came out they were so happy to find some water and they drank and Abdul Muttalib called the other people to drink with them he called them he said to them you do not have enough water come and drink with us so those people, the Meccans, those people conceded that Abdul Muttalib discovering water was a proof that Abdul Muttalib was the rightful uh, custodian of Zamzam well. And they said to him, by God, the one who gave you water in this desert is the one who gave you water in Mecca. Zamzam well is yours. And let's go back to Mecca. We do not need the diviner. So they went back to Mecca and they didn't meet the diviner. They went to Mecca. And Abdul Muttalib found the things that Jurhum men had buried in Zamzam well when they were forced to evacuate Mecca. He found six swords of gold, armors, and two deer of gold. The, the gate of Kaaba was stamped from the gold deer and the gold swords. And the tradition of providing the pilgrims with Zamzam water was established. References, the sealed nectar, uh, the biography of Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, Jamharat al Nasab, uh, uh, Abi al Munzir, Hisham ibn Muhammad, al Sa'ib al Kalbi, and al Munamak uh, in the Quraysh news, Muhammad ibn Habib al Baghdadi, and uh, al Muhabbar li Abi Ga'far ibn Muhammad, the beginning and the end, al Bidaya wa Nihaya ibn Kathir, al Mufassal fi Tariq al Arab, detailed in history of Arab before Islam, Dr. Jawad Ali, and also Wikipedia and Islam, well, Islam Web. Thank you so much.